Hi and welcome to Scott's Inverts, I'm Scott, these are the Inverts. Today we are rehousing our Avicularia Species Peru Purple Adult Female that we bought from, um, well we got from Bugnot um, back at the Bristol show. Absolutely stunning female, um, we're going to rehouse her in this video and get her all set up in a new accommodation. Anyway, let's get on with today's video. So this is the enclosure that we're going to be using, a boreal one, air holes across that bottle, that's what that metal mesh is, Levington's topsoil, um, also there's some clay balls in the bottom separated with a bit of mesh, there's a drainage layer, there's some uh, metal mesh at the top as well for more air holes allowing for decent airflow across this whole enclosure. We've only gone for about an inch and a half of substrate because the Aviculia genus tend not to burrow whatsoever. Um, you normally find them up a little bit higher than what you do normally. And this Avicularia species Peru purple was one that we got from Bugnot at their Bristol show. And she's absolutely gorgeous. She has got a bit of a bare bum because she does need a malt, but she's absolutely stunning. Now, with Carabina versicolas as well as the Aviculias, we need to do the same thing. We need to keep the humidity up quite high, but we, we need to keep that airflow in there to stop the mold. So we need airflow coming across the bottom and going up out the top, which is exactly what this enclosure here provides for us. Um, you can do it if you haven't got this enclosure, just make sure you've got a few holes at the bottom, loads of little like pinholey holes, and then a ton of holes across the top as well. So we get that warm air rising going through the enclosure and out the top scenario. We've put the moss in at the back. Again, this is collected from a local woodland. I do have permission from the landowner, which is absolutely essential if you're collecting anything from the woods, you do need the landowner's permission. Um, it's covered in moss. It was taken from a fallen tree. Um, so it's gone in the back of there. Again, more moss collected from the same woodland. Again, on more of that bark down on the right. Um, the What the actual moss does is it doesn't only look great, but it takes on eight times its own weight in water. So if we forget to spray this enclosure for, let's say, for one week by accident, we don't have to panic too much because that moss has expanded eight times and it's got all that water inside it, so it can still release humidity into this enclosure. Like a little kind of peace of mind, but like I said, moss in an enclosure just looks absolutely epic. So we've gone for that court bark tunnel in the middle Again, an arboreal species, they will go inside it. Um, I've found, since setting up this enclosure, she spent the last three days sitting on the outside and has webbed up the actual court bark on the outside only. Water dish, keeping it simple, just an old bottle top, give it a clean, put it in the enclosure, fill it with water, job done, and just make sure you keep it topped up. So we all look on our spoilers daily, so just check in on her daily and just make sure the, the bottle top there is topped up. So all I'm doing now is topping it up, giving that moss a good spray down. Um, absolutely essential. It is slightly moist when I picked it up, but I kind of think, you know, let's give it a little boost. Let's get the bark that it's attached to nice and wet as well. A little bit of water going down the actual court bark itself as well. What that does is create a really high humidity area inside that core bark so the spider's got the choice of going inside there for higher humidity or staying on the outside. I think in the future what I'll do is probably spray paint the outside of these enclosures black so they really feel more secure and more at home. Now here she is, um, there's no room for me to put the catch cup in, take the lid off and let her come out by herself unfortunately. So we are going for the the, uh, the tong technique. Um, what that is, is we turn the tongs upside down so we don't use this, the, this, the pincy end, we use the other end and we just gently agitate our spider. All we're doing, it's almost like very gently tickling the spider just to make her feel uncomfortable so she wants to move out of that catch cup. And in the end, off she goes, absolutely beautiful. And there's that bear bomb. <laughs> and just look at her exploring her enclosure, absolutely stunning. Told you what to chase Told you how to run the race Every move was on the page But I didn't like their way Had to fight and misbehave Had to find a way to change 
I didn't leave to find my way Caught up in a daydream, I be my mind up there almost daily It's how I pass time, no opinions safely It's how I understand what I want in this place, see Cause everybody wanna tell you bad things What could go wrong, what fame brings But Success is a finicky thing And if you ain't sure, no, it'll never be I don't wanna let myself die. Boom! So that was the rehousing of our Vicularia Species Peru Purple um, again, very, very similar to that Caribbean Versicola in the way that we keep these guys. Um, be very, very mindful that these are known to jump just as much as the Versicola, literally from a tiny, tiny sling. In fact, if you have a tiny, tiny sling, the best way that I can think of to keep them is the same way we are keeping Sarmapaeus uh, genus and the Caribbean Versicola. So that's with one of these slings pots soil up to there, and for the arboreal side, a piece of live sphagnum moss so we can hold moisture in there. Um, and if we don't spray these, let's say once a week, let's say we miss spraying it, we know there's a lot of moisture still in that moss, so we're still good to go. And if you just check that out, there's the Amurnia up there. But that's exactly how I'd keep a sling of an Avicularia or a Carabina um, Versicola. Oh my word. These things are just absolutely beautiful. Literally, I start looking at them and then, then I'm gone. Um, <laughs> but thank you so much for watching today's video. Um, I will do a care video on this species, most definitely, probably in, in six or seven months' time when I've got more experience of keeping her with me. Um, I obviously know how to keep them completely fine, but I want to have a look to see what characteristics she displays, if there's anything different to what the textbooks and what other people are telling me, um, and just just kind of experience it for myself and then relay that message on to you guys. Anyway, if you've got this far and you're not subscribed, hit that subscription button um, and remember to get the notifications on. If you like this video, drop it a like. If you didn't like it, feel free to give it a dislike. Helps me know which way or to, to kind of take the channel to kind of curve it for you guys at home anyway thank you so much for watching and as always we shall see you again on the next one